Amiga OS 4.1 Classic running on UAE. This is new work uh, done by, I believe, Tony Whalen, if I'm saying his last name correctly. He has integrated the QEMU PowerPC emulator for x86 systems into the UAE package, including uh, emulation of the Cyberstorm, uh, emulation of the Picasso 4. So when you launch UAE at this point, it becomes a classic PowerPC equipped Amiga. And so Steve has volunteered graciously after flying over here from uh, thousands of miles <laughs> to present his work. Uh, and so please join us in the, uh, in the uh, seminar area for the presentation. And uh, take it away, Steve. Try now. Oh, you got to press your button. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I guess uh, I actually originally bought this license for Amiga OS 4.1 Classic to run on a real Amiga. <laughs> um, but then I, I heard about the work that, um, that Tony was doing getting QMU, PowerPC emulation working under WinUAE. Um, I was quite keen to try it out uh, and basically see um, how well it performed compared to um, running it on the real thing. Um, there's been quite a few uh, versions of this. Um, I think there's, they're up to beta 20 now <laughs> of uh, WinUAE. Um, so let's dive in. Um, basically, uh, Tony Wyland put in some information um, on the EAB website, which I'm just showing here, um, a guide on how to actually do the installation. Um, I'm not going to delve into the actual installation of the, the, the hard disk or setting it up because that would take about you know, several hours and probably longer. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to point out that there is a guide that explains very clearly how to do it. Um, I wanted to set the expectations clearly though that uh, the emulation is not the same as running Amiga OS 4.1 on an X1000 or a SAM 440 or a SAM 460. Um, it's much slower um, and there are plenty of bugs and issues um, in the emulation at the moment. So I just wanted to flag that point. Uh, you need to be aware of it. Um, it's not finished yet, <laughs> um, which is why the WinUAE Win uh, beta version is still extremely beta. Uh, on the positive side though, um, it does run and with the latest um, beta 20 with the SLIRP, I don't know if that's pronounced slurp or SLIRP, but when I'm at one of those, um, you get the networking support as well. Um, what I wanted to just quickly show uh, before I launch it um, is basically, a, in addition to grabbing the WinUAE program, you also need to download the plugins for QEMU, which is the PowerPC emulation. Um, basically, that's a bunch of DLLs that are used by WinUAE to, to do the PowerPC emulation. In addition to that, there's also some requirements around um, the ROMs that are needed in order to use it. So um, at the moment, the beta version supports running using a Cyberstorm PowerPC uh, ROM, which is basically is the, the actual ROM that would sit on the real Cyberstorm PowerPC card if you had one. Um, so that has to be transferred off of a real one. Um, fortunately, there is a, a, a pack of um, files that are contained on an EID file server that actually includes these ROMs. Um, you can also download the Picasso 4 ROM, which is needed, because it's the only display card that's supported at the moment with WinUAE running Amiga OS 4.1 Classic. All right, so these are required to be in, uh, available um, in WinUAE, and obviously the configuration is set to use these. Um, um, so if we now drop into the actual uh, launcher, uh, this is the beta 20. Um, it's probably a newer version since I did this, but this was the latest one just before I got on the plane. <laughs> uh, so um, this is my configuration file here um, for 
F1, uh, Amiga OS 4.1 Classic. Um, you can basically see it's set up as a, a 4000, basically. Um, it has uh, a number of settings that have been uh, basically greyed out that have been automatically filled in as part of the beta. Um, you can see down here the definition of the Cyber Power PC, um, which is basically that we have to point that to that ROM file that I showed you before. Uh, um, in terms of memory, um, contrary to what I've got in the configuration, it does not use this. Um, the Zorro 3 fast RAM is not used. So it will use the 128 meg that's on board the PowerPC, and it will use any swap um, partition that you've set up in the hard file. Okay. So if we look at the hard files, um, it's necessary to have the hard files. Um, I believe some people have had success running these as SFS. Um, you can also run them as fast file system. Um, because I started this early on, I actually used the fast file system because it was the only one that was supported at the beginning. Um, but you can use either now. Um, so basically what that means is that um, you mount the drive, you enable the RDB mode, which is necessary for it to work. Um, and it needs to be set to use the IDE controller on port zero. All right. <coughs> now you can use a HDF file or you can use a, uh, a VHD file as well if you want to use one of the ones that grows instead of having to use the full size to start with. Um, in my case, I just used the full size straight away. Um, if you need to create these from scratch, you can do them in this window here under the hard file settings. You can actually specify the size of the, the drive and then the type of the file system and then whether it's dynamic or not. Yes, there's a difference in speed as well if you change it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's a number of different ways of running it. I know that since the original beta, they've changed it so that you can use the SCALDI controller as well. So, uh, it's a bit that pointed out to me. So, you can certainly run it that way if you want to. Um, as has been pointed out, it's a bit slower, but I'm not going to change it right at the second. <laughs> Just in case it breaks stuff. I don't really want it to break stuff. Um, the CD drive is mounted. Um, now, the CD drive is the method that we need to use in order to get data into the emulation. So it's necessary for us to basically create an ISO and mount it um, into the emulation in order to transfer data. To do that, um, basically I've been using uh, ImageBurn and just grabbing whatever files and folders I need. I've created an ISO file and then mount it in here. You can basically specify that location down here as far as the ISO that you mount into it at boot time. Um, you also use that as for the installation of Amiga OS 4.1. Right. Um, I've added another HDF just because I wanted some of my other common data and I didn't want to have to transfer it again. Um, that was created in WinUAE uh, previously. Um, I've also created a swap um, partition which is needed so that you can use more than 128 meg of RAM that comes with it on the Power PC. However, it is slow. All right, uh, is there anything else I need to cover? This covers the Picasso 4 Zoro 3. Um, <laughs> they actually have the option here to increase it. I think it would be great if they could actually do that because that would make a massive difference to the resolutions it would support um, and the games that would work, I think. All right. Um, I've also enabled here the 8265, which enables the network support. Um, there's an additional step that's required in the Amiga OS to make that work, but I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Um, basically, the rest is just fairly standard configuration for WinUAE, so I won't go into it too much. All right, well, let's kick it off and cross my fingers that it works. Okay. <laughs> no. um, so basically, the uh, the boot speed of um, Amiga OS 4 Classic, as was mentioned earlier, would be faster if I was using SCSI instead of IDE. Um, but it's still not too bad in in the grand scheme of things. Um, 
I don't think you can see it on the projector screen, but there is actually a display at the bottom that says um, whether it's accessing the hard disk or what it's actually doing. Uh, okay. Basically, uh, I haven't done a huge amount to this, I just wanted to show a couple of things quickly, um, just to show the things that work and the things that don't. Um, I'll try and avoid the things that don't. Because <laughs> 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 otherwise I'll have to keep restarting this. Um, interestingly enough, Ranger has some uh, interesting figures for us on the actual speed of the, um, the actual emulation. I'm not sure how much space you can put in these numbers. Um, but it's claiming it's running at 272. When I booted it earlier today, it said it was 270. So, I don't know um, how accurate that is, really. Um, but just to give you an idea um, of the fact that it has picked it up correctly, uh, I mean, Range is detecting it as the correct hardware. OK. Um, yeah. Um, there are limitations around this. I mean, obviously, if you're running on a classic Amiga and you're using a 233 megahertz Cyberstorm Power PC, there's also limitations on what you can do in Amiga OS 4. Um, things like compositing, running games that um, need high-end 3D graphics that are obviously not going to work. Um, and some stuff will work, but very slowly. Um, and some things need more memory than is available in a classic platform. Um, unfortunately, there's no real rules here except try it, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't, well, restart and try something else. <laughs> um, an interesting thing I found is that um, the code for DV player is obviously very tight because um, when I was testing um, MP3 playback, which is one of the things I wanted to show you, um, when you do it in Amiga Amp 3, uh, it, it jutters and stutters all over the place, but when you run it in DB player, it works pretty well. Um, so I wanted to show that that does actually work under the emulation. Um. Basically, on the music front, obviously, there's plenty of um, uh, things you can play. Mod playback seems to work all right. Um, yeah, just be aware of um, the limitations of you know, being able to run things at the same time and all that sort of stuff. Um, there is a limit to how well it works. So, um, One thing I was surprised about is that the, uh, the little notifications actually cause quite a spike in the activity around the, uh, the system. So uh, when you're actually doing stuff, uh, and you do get a pop-up, you'll definitely notice the slowdown. Just to cover that point, and I should have covered it to start with, um, this is a, um, a Core i7 uh, late 2013 MacBook Pro, um, 16 gig of RAM. Um, it's running Windows 7 Professional 64-bit on a, um, a boot camp position. 
So I'm not actually running macOS to do this demonstration, but I also have this running on macOS using FSUAE, which works as well. Um, so uh, either way works, but there is a slight speed improvement by using WinUAE instead of FSUAE. It's about, I don't know, probably 10 to 10 percent difference. Um, you definitely notice it though. Um, so uh, the, I think the main reason behind that is more to do with the fact that the Beta 20 drivers, um, as the updates are coming out, they're coming out for WinUAE first and then FSUAE is having to retrofit them to their own software. And I think it's not as optimised perhaps as it could be if it was actually running um, you know, uh, native release on that. Because basically all that's happening is that the FSUAE guys are just taking that kernel from WinUAE and just dumping it straight into theirs. So the application compatibility, I'm not sure if it's optimised for the use under Mac OS X. But they do both work. Um, and if I had more time, I'd show it. And for people here, if you want to see it on Mac OS, then I can show you after. Um, okay. So, moving along. Um, just to prove that network works, and I'm really crossing my fingers at this point. <laughs> I should explain that the, the network support in, um, in WinUAE Beta 20 uses uh, SLIR, SLIRP. Um, beta, really beta driver, which is even more beta than the beta version that it's based on. Um, so there's plenty of things that can cause issues on the network side. Um, for example, eyebrows, if you try and download files, will freeze. Um, but what I found is that AWeb works really well. Um, speed is acceptable. Browsing is not too bad. Um, so, you know, in terms of usability, um, you can use it. Um, just be aware of the cavays around the limitations and what you can do with it. And obviously AWeb doesn't do a lot of the more fancy web um, rendering and stuff like that. So there are limits around what it can do for you. Um, but if you're trying to download software for this, it's great. Because basically, because of the ISO thing being really quite annoying to load software on, you can just download it directly from, from the browser, from OS Depot, OS4 Depot, or wherever you get your stuff from. Uh, okay. Ah, somebody's bleeding over my presentation. <laughs> Sorry to the internet. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's keep going there. Okay. Now, um, and to answer the other question, yes, I believe there is um, a 4.1 final edition for Classic going to be released as well. So yes, you will be able to, and it will be a third of the price that I paid for this. Right? I think I kind of got the raw end of the deal there. <laughs> but anyway, it's good, it's okay, doesn't matter. All right, all right, so what else did I want to show today? Um, okay, I wanted to show some games, so let's just quickly do that. Um, one thing that you'll find with games when you play them uh, on the system is that there will be considerable lag in the initial initialization of the game, and I think it's got to do with the fact that it's using swap space um, to run. But that's also the CPU has a factor as well. So um, I just wanted to mention that because you need to be prepared for the fact that stuff does launch slower than it does on the next 1000 or on a, a SAM. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I reassigned the T position um, to the hard disk, which helps improve performance a little bit. Um, but the actual swap space, yeah, it's just... Sorry. Yeah, that's right. The 128 meg is still what you've got to play with. Your RAM just won't use that. It will only use that part. Thank you. The swap. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
A Webster's better apparently because it doesn't do that. <laughs> well, it's good to have that covered. <laughs> Um, yes and no. So um, actually earlier, um, during the programming seminar, uh, I had to use this um, PowerPC emulation to do my coding um, because I don't have an Amiga OS 4 machine with me on this trip because it was too big to bring. So um, I actually used uh, this and I used Codebench on this setup um, and I did hit problems using the IDE interface on it. Um, basically. Yeah, there's something funny going on with the editor and I'm not able to put in certain characters like delete and enter and up and down arrows but the normal text keys work, it's a bit odd. Um, but you can edit with another editor and then compile the software and that seems to work fine. Yeah, it works. Yeah, I, I, I was doing my encoding on here um, with Tony's help the other day. So, um, yeah, it does actually work. Yeah. Uh, I recommend it, yeah, because I found before I had the swap file, a lot of the games and things wouldn't run. Um, after I put the swap file in place, a lot more of the games were running. Um, I think I think it doesn't have to be that big, to be honest. I mean, I, I did a gig for mine, but I don't. Is there any any other size that you're aware of? It, there's no point in being bigger than two because that's the limit anyway. But I think swap files. I thought it was a gig. Yeah. So even if you set something bigger, it's not using it all anyway. Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason to set it bigger. So yeah, you can run it bigger if you want, but it's not going to use it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all guilty of that. <laughs> I think I made one too big, way too big. So, that's cool. Um, Alright, is there any other questions? No? Yeah? Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's a late 2013 MacBook Pro. So, whatever that is, 2.67 or something like that. Yes, it would, but I, I have to be in Mac OS. But, <laughs> but yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm supposed to find that out. Yeah, let's find out. Yeah. But yeah. So, is it using more than one core? Yes, it is. So, there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, not necessarily, but this is the process that's actually running. So, yeah. I don't know. But it's not, it's not thrashing it. I mean, in the sense that I don't think the system is running at full speed in order to run it. I think, I've seen plenty of examples of people using i5s to run it as well. So I don't think it's, I don't think the cause of them, it's not that bad. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you need at least a dual core to run it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just thought those bastards Mac out there and I figured it would probably be fast enough. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, I understand. Yeah, so 
Alright. Is there any other questions? From here? No? Um, No, it's not straightforward. <laughs> I'd love to say it was, but it really, really isn't. Where are the instructions? Um, <laughs> I actually do have some instructions for an older version, a beta version of it. Uh, there are updated instructions, as was mentioned earlier, to do slightly faster of the um, You can go to EAB's uh, website and just click on the Renew AE uh, forum and they actually have an install guide there. Um, I'll just bring it up here. But this is basically the install guide um, and it shows you exactly what to do, what setup you need, blah, blah, blah. Comparing the hard file, setting up the position, the, um, the configuration of Renew AE, um, the actual config files or example ones are included so you can use them as a base so you don't have to sit there and do them yourself. Uh, and then just customise the locations of the hard files to your system. Uh, and then obviously, you know, there's plenty of discussion here. It basically shows you all of those steps. Um, on the blog that I did uh, for this, I actually showed the screenshots from my setup and how I did it. Um, but the setups are a little bit different now, um, so you can choose however you, whatever you can choose. Uh, but there's lots of information, there really is. Um, when I first started, there was very little information and it was really hard to get information about how to actually configure this correctly. And I think that's why lots of people have lots of different configurations because we all build out from different... Yeah, it was really picky about what worked, what didn't, and each beta changed the, the, the game each time. So it's getting better and better. Um, I should warn, though, that the beta version is beta. And um, I haven't tried to use it to run normal... WinUE emulation after installing it. So I'm not sure how well it works with the other emulations. So my advice in that regard is to have the two side by side. Keep the old one that is stable and just keep the development one separate and run that when you want to use it. Um, and that way you can still go back to the other one if it turns out not to work. <laughs> Because I'm guessing that with all the optimizations that they've done to make PowerPC work, I'm guessing there's probably some side effects for old, you know, original WinUE configuration. Uh, um, yeah. All right. Is there any other questions? No. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Um, for those who are actually here. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't have time because there's, there's other people that need to present today. Um, for the guys who are actually here at AmiWest, I'll show them the FSUAE um, setup and how that actually works on Mac OS X. Um, but I just didn't have time to do both today. Alright, so um, thank you very much for your attention today. Um, sorry if this was a bit rambling, I hope it was useful. And um, I guess we'll catch up again another time. Thank you.